Animation curves are, well, curves. You can use them to create a smooth transition from one number to another number, or otherwise make a number vary over time in a variety of unique ways. Why would you want to do this? Well, linear movements are great, but they're not the only thing you might want to do, and they make some movements look pretty flat. Sometimes you want something to accelerate or decelerate or move smoothly or move in a waving pattern and so on. Not just visual effects either, there might just be game numbers that you want to increase or decrease exponentially or in some other way. There's a million and one different uses for a numerical curve. Now, of course, you can implement you know a curved movement in a number without this kind of feature I've done plenty of other tutorials showing you how you can create a wavy effect using a sine wave or simply easing functions that make things move smoothly accelerate and decelerate yada yada but the advantage here is you don't need to know the specific formula or functions that will create the curve that you want and you can design any curve you can imagine in a completely visual way and make micro adjustments to it create any shape and use it to say when number X hits this number Y should be this you can make one the same way you make any resource, right click and hit create animation curve. Each animation curve resource can actually contain multiple curves. The only thing shared across the named resource appears to be the type of curve, which can be linear, which means each point draws a straight line to the next point. Smooth, there's like a simplified easing in both directions, so you'll get a slight acceleration and deceleration that, you know, is just to do in a very simple way, or the more complex version of that, which is Bezier curves, which allows you to customize how each line curves, accelerates and decelerates between the points on either side. This is the most customizable and overall most useful, although the others have their place as well. You can edit the curve and add points just by clicking anywhere on it and dragging the points around. You can manually set the values, of course, for these points uh, in the side bit. Uh, it's often useful, for example, to start with a straight line and set your second point to exactly 1.0 if you're making the curve for some kind of movement. So then you can control what that movement looks like at any point between 0% and 100% of the movement. You can then apply presets that will apply a number of common useful curves between your start and end values or between whichever points you have selected. So as a tutorial, I'm going to start with a simple quart curve here. It's just an easy one to visually understand. Look here, it starts with a little upward movement, so it's going slow, then it speeds up a lot, then slows down again for the end. And this is the kind of movement we can expect to see out of this if we apply it to a simple object that just moves from point A to point B using this as a curve. So how do we use this in GML and actually create this effect? The first thing I'll do is get the data of the curve I want to use and put it into a variable using this line. For those that know about structs, this is actually getting a struct with all kinds of data from the curve itself, but that's not too important to understand. It just means we can also do things like curve.name and curve.type to get more info. We can even get info about the specific points we placed on that curve in the IDE, but that's, that's not really important right now. Um, you can read more in the manual if you want to know more about that. Uh, but once we have this in this variable, we then also want a percent variable that we can scale over time, uh, just in a normal linear way, depending on how quickly we want the movement to happen. We just want to scale this from 0 to 1. Here I've decided to increase percent by 1 60th, meaning it'll take 60 frames to go from 0 to 1, or 1 second at 60 FPS. And if it goes over that, I'm resetting it back to 0. Then to go from percentage to actual position, I use this function, anim curve underscore channel underscore evaluate, providing the curve and the percent. This gets us our number from 0 to 1 in height based on the curve, which is where our smooth movement will actually come from. So from this, we just need to multiply that by a given distance to move smoothly along that distance. So that's what we do. We get our starting position, our ending position. This lets me get the distance between them. And then using that, we just set our coordinate to be that start position plus the distance times the position percentage. So if I go ahead and run that, uh, you can hopefully see how the curve is affecting the movement of this object from point A to point B. Slow at the start, slow at the end, quite fast in the middle. It's going a bit quick, so if I just change this from 60 to 120, um, run that again, that'll like uh, take make, make it take two seconds to complete the whole movement, so we can kind of see really slow at the start, quite quick in the middle, and quite slow towards the end, exactly as it should look according to our curve. And like I said, this doesn't just have to be for movements either, or numbers between 0 and 1. Uh, this is just one way to use these. I don't know why they're not just called curves, really, rather than animation curves. You could very feasibly use something like this to create an experience curve or a stat level curve for an RPG. You can specify each point precisely, so anything in your game that needs any kind of interpolation between two or more values could potentially make use of a curve. Of course, there's nothing to stop you from just using, you know, simple formulas for doing uh, linear interpolation or, um, or sine waves or things like that. 
Um, this is just another way to do it and a way to do it visually. Thank you, of course, to all of my Patreon supporters for f selecting this topic and funding its existence. Uh, if you want to be one of those people and you want to get access to these videos slightly early and get behind the scenes stuff, get to vote on the videos I cover, head over to patreon.com forward slash seanjs and you can do exactly that. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you all next time.